Hi, and welcome to module four on operators. And it's actually the first one of two on operators. This is the more basic set of operators. And here we'll largely keep to the real numbers. Now, we've dealt in the past, the first two modules with, with types of sets. And the third one on sort of why we care about sets. Now, a set is great, but by itself, a set doesn't do anything. If you want to have a set do something besides represent groups of things, we need to operate in some fashion on the set, and we do that with operators. Today we're going to deal with operators on elements in the set, and then uh, today, this module, sorry, habit, um, and then the next module we'll deal with operators on sets themselves. So let's start with operators on elements of sets, and again, these are a lot of things you've probably seen before in your life, um, hopefully seen before in your life, but we'll go through them anyway because we're starting from the beginning, as we said in the first module. Okay. So the very first operator is one you learned probably first of all in school, and that's the operator of addition. And we represent that by a plus, right? A plus sign. We dealt with that in arithmetic. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Here, two, here the plus is an operator, and it's operating on the two elements 2 and 3 of the integers. And together, the outcome of the operator is equivalent to 5. And that equals means equivalent to, right? It's the same as 5. So that's an operator. Another operator is minus right, 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. All right, there's the negatives come in, right? So subtraction is another operator. Subtraction minus, right? There's another operator you've seen before. Multiplication, 2 times 3 equals 6. Multiplication has a lot of different ways of writing it. Um, so 2 times 3 equals 6. You can also write it with a star. You see that a lot. A little asterisk, which I can't draw here. Um, you see that a lot on computer um, usage. In this, in the language which this book, the book was written in, a star um, could be a multiplication. You also sometimes see a dot, a single small dot. Also means multiplication. All these things we use in this book, more or less interchangeably. Okay, um, but all it means is do it more than one time, right? Two times three means you take three, <laughs> you take three, you take three more, that gives you six total, and so on. Um, last one is division. Division is done in two ways. This little sign, which I don't see that much anymore, but that means two divided by three. Um, that gives you two thirds, um, or 0.6666 forever, and so on. You can write that just for your edification. With the line over, that means repeating. That means it's repeating forever. Um, you can also write division, which is more commonly the more common way you see it, with a slash, two divided by three. It's the same thing. Um, so that's division. These are sort of the most common ones you've seen for you know since since grade school. These are operators. They operate on numbers in this case, on elements of sets. Um, there are other operators as well that are slightly less common um, in the past, but come up a lot in political science. There's the exponentiation operator, the exponent. So two to the third. The exponent is written just as a slightly raised value. Um, on the main value. This is 8. An exponent means take it 2 times 2 times 2. And here we're skipping ahead a little bit to the algebra review chapter, chapter 2 of the book, um, just because it's helpful to introduce operators now. So if 2 times 2 times 2, that means multiply 2 by itself 3 times. That's what the exponent does. In writing, you sometimes see an exponent with a little caret. So 2 to the 8th is 2 times 2 times 2, 8 times. Um, so that's 2 to the 8th. The, the caret means take 2 and raise it to the 8th power. So this is the same thing as 2 to the 8th. Um, so there's another way of writing an exponent. Other potential um, operators, there are a lot of them. A common use of an exponent is, the, is used with E. E is called the natural log. It, sorry, not time. E is is um, it's the base for the natural logarithm. It's a particular constant, 
a transcendental number. We looked, we talked about it in the first module, um, 2.7, blah, blah, blah. So e to the e squared is that um, natural log squared. Operators can also be um, more complicated. So if I want to add multiple numbers, uh, let me refresh one for this one. Um, I could use this operator. This is a capital little sigma, a Greek letter. Sigma is a capital. Um, it's typically used for the summation operator. A summation operator adds large numbers of things. So you don't need a summation operator if you're adding two things. You just put a plus there. But let's say I wanted to add everything in a set together. I use a summation operator. The way it works is by using indices. So here's my variable x. And this is why I mentioned variables last time. Um, and you put a little subscript, say i on it. Use these subscripts for i's, j's, and k's to start off with. That means um, a particular element in the set of all things x can be. So for instance, if x can be in the set 1, 3, 5, then x with a little 1 below it is the first element in the set. And x with a 2 below it is the second element in the set. And x with a 3 subscript is the third element in the set. And if we take a sub, if we do this and put i equals 1, 2, 3, what this tells us is add the first three elements in the set. Add the first element to the second element to the third element and add them all together. So this thing is x1 plus x2, and that's how you read it x1, x2, x3. In this case, that's 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 9. This is summation operator. It means add all the things that it tells you to add. And the stuff above and below the um, sigma, the summation sign, tells you where to start and where to end. So this means add, start at the first one and end at the third one. If there's a 2 on top, it only add the first two, and so on. If there was a 2 on bottom, we'd add only the second, the second and the third, and not the first. The summation sign will tell you how many things to add. If you don't see a thing in the bottom or the top, if you don't see an i equals 1 or a 3 on top, that means add them all. You can do the same thing with a product. That's a capital pi. It means product. These are chosen for a reason. Uh, the Greek letter sigma is like an S, sigma. So a capital sigma stands for sum. Um, pi is like a P. So the capital P, capital pi, stands for product with a P. It's the exact same notation. This means multiply all the xi's together. That's x1 times x2 times x3. And again, this notation is all in the book as well in the first chapter. Um, this is just to get used to it a little bit. In that case, it would be 1 times 3 times 5, which is 15. So that's those operators. Again, there are more operators. Operators can also be functions written a little differently. So these um, functions like the logarithm, which is a common function used. So ln is typically used as the natural log. It can also be used, um, well, ln is always the natural log. The natural log is a particular kind of logarithm. You probably have it on a calculator, on the computer calculator if you have it. Um, natural log has some, some particular properties. For instance, the natural log in general can be written like this. The parentheses mean it's a function of x, and we'll deal with functions um, a little bit later. Um, it's in the third video course. Sorry, sorry the second video course. Um, that's the natural log. It's an operator. All these functions are also operators on on elements. Here we're operating on x. The natural log is a nice property that if you operate on e, the base of it, you get 1. And if you operate on 1, you get 0. So these are helpful things to know. Um, this is just an operator. The natural log is an operator, like other operators. Um, and there are lots more operators. Sometimes you see log by itself. This can be confusing by itself because log can be the natural log or it can mean the log base 10 just because we deal with the base 10 number system. Um, it goes, you know, uh, and so we typically say 10. To be clear, we'll often put a little 10 subscript which means log base 10. Um, a log base 10 
is very similar to a log, except if you put 10 in here, you get 1. Um, log of 1 is still 0. And sometimes you might use general logs like this. Log base A. Here's the basis A. So the log base A of A, or A some constant, is 1. And there are lots, lots more operators, and we'll deal with a whole bunch of them as the course goes on. But these are the ones that you've probably seen before, and the ones that are most general, um, because they deal with the numbers that are the most common sets in political science. Before we close this particular lecture, um, we should talk about how operators work. Um, these operators have particular rules. There's a acronym for those rules, PEMDAS. If you go for acronyms, you might like this. It stands for the order of operations. The order of operations is, if you have a whole long expression, how do you take the, the order of those operations? So for instance, you might have two plus uh, three divided by one minus six. How would you evaluate this expression? Well, PEMDAS tells you, first, you deal with things in parentheses. So each thing in parentheses gets dealt with first. So here in this parentheses is 3 plus 7, that's 10. In this parentheses is 2 plus 3, that's 5. And in this parentheses is 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. Next is exponents. There are no exponents in this expression, so we can ignore that. Um, if we didn't want to ignore it, we could stick a 2 up, a squared up here. And now, you, now, you have to, now this is squared. And then we do with that next, we get 100 on top times 5 divided by negative 5. Next is multiplication. Well, we're multiplying these two numbers on top. So now we have, I should put equals, I guess. We have 500 on top and negative 5 on bottom. Now we need to deal with division. 500 divided by negative 5 is negative 100. Note the negative sign because dividing a positive number by a negative number gives you a negative number. We'll talk about this a little more when we deal with um, algebra review. It's actually arithmetic review. Um, and we're done here. Now, if we had this whole expression plus 7, well, that would be next. That's the A for addition. So we'd have a 7 in all these expressions. And then we'd have to add 7 at the end to get negative 93. And then finally, if there's subtraction, the whole thing would subtract a number, but I ran out of room, so I can't do that one. But you get the point. First you deal with parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. And if you do that in that order, you always get the right answer. Um, this gets this seem, this might seem trivial to some people here if you've had a strong background um, in arithmetic, but um, this gets more complicated when you replace all these threes and sevens and twos with x's and y's and or maybe functions. Then you can be real careful that you do the um, expressions in the order of PEMDAS to avoid having um, problems in your expression that are less easier to, to figure out that you got it wrong because they're complicated expressions full of functions and compositions and so on, which we'll all get to um, in later modules for the, the second video course. But that's it for now. Um, Next time, we'll be talking about more operators here, operators on sets instead of operators on elements of sets. Thank you.